Hi everyone and welcome back to Scotland Hill Farms. I am Jessica and this video is my week three of the pantry challenge that I'm doing. So it's all, well it's not all the meals I made because once in a while I do forget to video them, but it's a lot of the meals I made. So we're doing really well cleaning out our freezers and pantries, um, using up some canned goods and meats since I need to uh, make room for a another pig that we're getting in a month and we're doing really well so at the beginning of this week I did go grocery shopping um, which was part of my rules that I set for myself every two weeks I could do a grocery shop using no more than $25 for fruits and vegetables uh, fresh fruits and vegetables and then we would use canned or frozen or whatever we had when those ran out to supplement We've done really well at that, and I'll put up my grocery haul in a minute, but I was very pleased with that. And I, I should mention, this is part of the Three Rivers Homestead Challenge. So it's um, a group of YouTubers that are trying to clear out their pantries, their freezers, challenging themselves. There are no set rules, so everyone just kind of sets the rules for themselves, but it's just about using what we have, trying not to spend so much, or um, just using up what's there first to be better stewards of what we have. So I joined up with that. I'll put this, the link to those other channels in this video. And yeah, we're doing really well. I'm really enjoying it. It's making me think outside the box. I just kind of had gotten in a rut with making the things that I know my family likes and that were <laughs> easier to prepare and didn't require much thought. So we're kind of in a slow period right now, being January, and I'm in the house a lot more since I don't have a garden because we're in New York and there's snow. We've had a lot of it lately. So yeah, so... I just thought this would be a good time to do it and a fun cha fun challenge to join in on. So let me show you my groceries. So I'm feeling pretty good about this pantry challenge so far. I only had a few grapes left, um, a head of romaine lettuce, and then I did have some apples, oranges, and grapefruits, which I knew would last longer. So this was my next haul. I wanted to stay under $25 and it came out at $24.12, so perfect. And this should do us really well. I got a bunch of bananas. Like I said, every week we probably have to go back for these, we eat so many, but I tried to get ones that were green, a little yellower and yellow, and hopefully that'll spread us out for a little while. I got some red grapes, they were actually on sale this week. Some raspberries that are really just a treat. I'm hoping this pineapple is better than the last one, but we'll see. And then I got another thing of celery to make soups and stews. Another thing of romaine hearts and one of iceberg for a couple of recipes. Two cucumbers just for fresh eating, mostly, mostly for lunches probably, but just nice to cut up with anything we don't have a quick fetch to go with it. I had some whole carrots to go in some soups and stews probably, I, and I will just eat these raw myself too, but I also did get a thing of organic baby cut carrots. Uh, I got these last time and they did taste really good and it's a quick thing to grab. So that's all that I got, it was $24.12. This was the start of our week, so I usually make a big Sunday dinner and invite people over. And this day I had taken a pork roast out and unthawed it overnight. I did sear it on all sides in the Instapot on saute and then added a jar of pepper relish. I put the Instapot lid back on, set that to sealing, and then I did time it for two hours and it came out great. Sometimes for these big Sunday dinners, I also make dessert, not every time, but once in a while. So I had actually put this sourdough starter in to ferment the night before. I got it out in the morning, I rolled it out. 
I was spreading butter all over the dough and now I'm spreading cinnamon and sugar on top. Then I take it and it's not easy to do with one hand but I am rolling it as tight as I can into a log and yes my sugar does have clumps in it and guess what it won't matter it still turned out great and tasted wonderful. So after I roll this into as tight of a log as I can get, I tuck the ends in, and then I actually cut it using dental floss, uh, which makes it a little bit easier to cut a soft dough rather than using a knife. And I cut this into 12 pieces, and I put them into a sprayed uh, cast iron pan. I had to use two because mine isn't big enough. And then I'm pouring cream over the top. After the cream goes on, I let them rise and soak in the cream for about a half an hour before baking them. And this just gives them a flavor that is out of this world. It is definitely a decadent dessert and one that I don't do very often. I decided for our vegetable this day that I would do home canned uh, cooked carrots. So I took out three pint jars of carrots the nice thing is, is these are fully cooked, so all I have to do is put them in the pan and heat them up. I did add just a tiny bit of butter and sugar on this day. I also got out some green beans because I know I have some people that don't like carrots. These are the pork, the pork roast when it was finished. It was really good, and I cooked up some potatoes. This was a fantastic meal and followed by those delicious cinnamon rolls. I made up a glaze for them afterwards out of some milk, butter, powdered sugar, and vanilla. When I had made my sourdough the previous day for the cinnamon rolls, I made sure that I made up some extra sourdough starter because on this day I wanted to use that to make some cast iron skillet pizzas. So I got this skillet really nice and hot and I melted some butter and put that all around. And this jar is actually my sourdough discard. So I put that on the pan and I'm gonna take that and I'm going to just rub it all around and get it flat on the pan with the back of a spoon. Just so it's the same kind of thickness around and it meets all the edges. I will allow that to cook for just a minute or two. It really doesn't take very long and you can see the consistency change and it becomes a crust. It's not a very crispy crust or anything. It's kind of a thin and floppy, but it has an interesting flavor and my family actually loves it and will ask for these on occasion. So I just keep rubbing that sourdough starter all around on the pan until it changes into that consistency. I'm not sure how well you can see on the screen here, but it has become solid. It's no longer a liquid consistency, and I'm now gonna take it and be very careful because cast iron, of course, is scorching hot. So I put on my hot pad, and I'm just going to stick that in the oven. You do have to watch it. It really only takes a few minutes. I think this time it took about five minutes to just bake that up and get it nice and firm. When it comes out of the oven, you can see that the edges are kind of um, pulled away from the edge of the pan and it just looks cooked. It's not real brown or anything, it just looks cooked through. And like I said, it only takes a few minutes. Now I'm taking some home canned pizza sauce and I'm rubbing that all around the pizza surface. I'm going to take some homemade mozzarella cheese. I made this. I, what does it say in the bag? I made this January 24th, and then I think I did throw it in the freezer, and it comes out fine. So I'm just taking that mozzarella cheese, and I'm spreading it all over on top of the sauce. My family does appreciate a good amount of cheese on their pizza. And then next, I'm going to take some pepperoni. So I'm using up some of the pepperoni that I had in my fridge freezer which was overstuffed with things so this is good to actually use some of this up still within date um, but you know just nice to use things up and so on this night my family decided they only wanted cheese and pepperoni on their pizza no other toppings Sunday nights are pretty chill for us because uh, we have to go out and do chores and so then we typically come in and eat something quick 
pizza is a good go-to on this night. I put this back in the oven and there's really no set time. I really just keep an eye on it and make sure I stay in the kitchen and I just wait until it's brown and bubbly on the top and it looks like the way we usually eat it. And here is the pizza coming out of the oven. It is piping hot, but you can see it's kind of getting brown and bubbly on top. And that's the way we like it. Nobody complained about this meal and there were definitely no leftovers. But I did want to get in some nutrition, so I did serve it with some fresh grapes. This was a leftover day. Every few days I like to gather up whatever we have in the fridge and just make sure it gets used up. So we had some turkey a la king, some of the biscuits and gravy, and some noodles that were left over. Also some leftover carrots and some leftover green beans. And I did cut up some fresh apples as well. When surveying my freezer, I realized that we do really have a lot of this link sausage uh, in the freezer. So I decided I was going to cook that up today. And I started off by taking some leftover onions and putting those in a cast iron pan that I had sprayed. And then I'm also going to add some green peppers that have been in the house in that little freezer that I want to get cleared up. My husband likes to have onions and peppers on the sausage and so I'm going to start those frying up now. I let the sausage completely defrost and then put it in another cast iron pan with some water. It does take a while for these sausages to cook through so I prefer to put them in some boiling water first to make sure it is thoroughly cooked through and then what I do is let that water boil off and I brown the outside of the sausages and I found that this is just the way that we like to do it what tastes best for us. I also wanted to serve some greens along with this so I took some of my romaine hearts and I'm just going to cut them up. We like fairly fine pieces of salad but we're not too picky and often we will just have lettuce in our salads and that's fine with me. If we have extra stuff I do throw that in occasionally, but no one complains about a plain salad here. So I'm just gonna put that in my salad spinner, and then I put the whole spinner in the sink and run water in it. Let it sit for a few minutes just to get off anything that might be on the lettuce. And I did have a few things in the refrigerator that I wanted to get used up. There was just a piece of cucumber left, so I chopped that up along with basically some things for me. It has been really cold here recently, so I don't like to go into the freezer that often because it's out in my cold garage. So I went out once and decided to get everything that I would need for the next couple of days. So I pulled out some of these Italian sub rolls. They are rock hard. And then I also pulled out some ham that I had frozen along with some salami that was frozen and those freeze very easily. They keep well in the freezer. I also went ahead and pulled out this large pork roast along with a really large English cut beef roast. And my plan for those is to do some canning in the next few days. So I want to give them a good long time to defrost. So I thought it might be fun to give you a look at what I typically eat for breakfast. I really just kind of rotate between three breakfasts. This is one of my favorite. I really can't have much dairy meat or eggs um, so I like to eat a grapefruit in the morning and then I made these sourdough bagels that don't have any of those ingredients in them I make some homemade vegan cream cheese which is what you just saw me spreading on and now I'm putting on some of that hot pepper jelly which is an absolutely delicious combination this is probably one of my favorite breakfasts for lunch on this day, I decided to make some homemade subs. And fun fact, I worked at a sub shop for a lot of my teenage years, so I actually know how to do this quite well. I took those two rolls that I had taken out of the freezer and I had let them defrost, and I'm putting them under the broiler for just a minute or two. You really have to watch them because you don't want them to get burned, just a little bit warm and crunchy. 
I prefer to use iceberg lettuce for my subs, so I get out this head of lettuce, and as you can see, I'm cutting it as thin as I can. I don't know, this just makes, it's the way that we did it in the sub shop, and it just makes it taste better for some reason. I have no idea why. So I'm going to cut that up into fairly small pieces and get it into my salad spinner and get it all washed up. I have one son who has never liked lunch meats. I don't know that he's ever eaten them. And because I have the ingredients, I will oblige him on this day and make him a pizza sub. So I do have the homemade pizza sauce and I have that pepperoni that was left over in the freezer. And I still have some of that mozzarella that I had made during the week. So I'm going to make him his own pizza sub. Once I'm done putting the pizza sub together, I'm going to start on the other sub. And these are quite large bread rolls. They're actually bigger than a sub roll. They're more almost a loaf of bread. So this is going to make a rather large sub and we will just split it up and share it. So I'm going to put on some of that washed shredded lettuce. I've learned that the trick that we always use is a little bit of salt and pepper and then a, just a sprinkling of oregano. And guys, this is just the combo. It tastes so, so good. I don't often buy sliced cheese anymore because we don't use it up that fast. And I find that no one really misses it. So I skipped the cheese on this sub. I'm just putting on some of that ham that I had defrosted from the freezer. And then I'm going to put on a layer of salami. So all the flavor is going to be there. I don't think anyone is really going to miss that cheese. So we're gonna top this sub off with that crispy roll that I did in the oven, cut it in half and plate that one up that is finished and people can put on any condiments, mayo, mustard that they want. Those will just be on the table. And then I'm gonna go over and finish that pizza melt sub. So I'm just going to stick that under the broiler. Again, it just takes a couple of minutes. I'm going to stay nearby and make sure that that doesn't burn. While that sub is under the broiler, I quickly just cut up some cucumbers that I had and some fresh apples just to be able to get some extra nutrition into this meal. I checked on that pizza melt and it was all nice and hot and bubbly. And now I'm just adding some more of that home canned pizza sauce onto the top roll. I'll take that and put it on top and cut that up as well. The roll was kind of falling apart, but no big deal. It'll stick together with the cheese. And as you can see, this was a quite simple but satisfying meal for everyone. I was looking for a quick supper this night and my daughter told me about a meal she's made several times and I did want to use up some chicken breasts. So I took two chicken breasts, put them in the Instapot along with some hot sauce and some ketchup and I just cooked that chicken breast on high pressure until the chicken was cooked. I then added in some of the rest of a bottle of ranch that I had so it was good to get that out of the fridge because it had been in there quite a while. With the chicken breast, I took out some flatbreads that I had made, some sourdough flatbreads from the freezer. I put the chicken on top of the flatbread, put some cheese on top of that chicken, and folded the flatbread over. I was a little worried since my family doesn't love new things, but my son even commented that this was a really great meal. Again, I was looking to use up some leftovers, so I took some of that leftover buffalo chicken, put it in a tortilla wrap, used up some of the leftover carrots and peas from the fridge, and cut up a fresh apple. That was for my husband. I ate some of the leftover fried rice, some carrots, and an apple. I wanted to make some sourdough English muffins the next day, so I fed up my starter, got it all nice and bubbly, and then made up the dough for my English muffins. And there it is mixing up. I like to ferment my dough, so I will let that sit out overnight and ferment. This next morning was a Saturday, so I usually do a bigger breakfast on Saturdays. So I took some of that sourdough discard and I'm turning it into pancakes. 
this may seem strange, but I actually like to mix up my pancake batter in a pitcher because I just find that it's easier to pour into the pan. I do have a larger uh, glass measuring cup with a spout on it, but I don't know. It's just so much easier to mix up in here. So I just make sure that it's really whisked up, and then I do let that pancake bat batter sit for another five or ten minutes just so it can get all activated and ready. At this point, my dogs were sitting at my feet because they know it's their breakfast time. So I decided to take some time and get them their breakfast. We have three dogs to feed, so I just get them out their dried kibble. This bowl is for our larger dog, Charlie. He definitely gets more. He's twice the size of my other dogs. And so this is Maisie's slow feeder bowl. She's a beagle, and so she likes to wolf down feed. So she's always had to use this type of bowl. And she loves her food. And then it's time to feed my little old dog, Sadie. She likes her spot to eat. She's not crazy about her food, but she will eat it. So we're back on to making the pancakes. I got this electric pan, nice and hot, sprayed it down with some spray oil, and then I'm just going to pour the batter on top. We did make several different kinds of pancakes on this day. Some were plain, some I added chocolate chips to, and I did make a few with blueberries for me because this is how I prefer it. And I just pour them on the pan and then I put the add-ins in on top and that works just fine for us. And of course, you can't forget the coffee. While the pancakes were cooking, I had also fried up a pound of our own bacon that we had made from our pigs last year. This is really just a treat for them, so I don't cook much all at once. Everyone just gets like two strips of bacon, and of course, everyone loves that. I'm just going to drain the grease off on these paper towels. The pancakes are ready to come off the skillet. And these are flatter pancakes. Um, it is made with sourdough discard. I just find that that's what happens. They still taste great and we just stack more up if we want more of them. So we'll just put a few pieces of bacon on with these pancakes and that finishes up our meals for the week. Have a great week, everyone. And as always, like and subscribe if you would please.